Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Without wavering. Everyone say without wavering. All right. How many of you know wave, wavering is not waving? All right. So just so if you wave to Mario or Mario, uh, just so you know, if you wave to them, they will wave back. That's not what it's about. You're wavering. In other words, getting shaky, getting nervous, getting whatever. All right. Without wavering, let us hold tightly to the hope we say we have. For God can be trusted to keep His promise. Just out of curiosity, does anybody in the house love Jesus? Does anybody love God? All right, let's say it again then. For God can be trusted to keep His promise. Amen. How many of you know that is a truth? You may not be able to trust me all the time. I wish you could, but you probably can't. You may not be able to trust each other. You may not be able to trust your spouse. How many of you know we want to do the right thing, but sometimes we get it wrong. Sometimes we make mistakes, but God never gets it wrong and God never makes a mistake. He can be trusted to keep His promise. Over the last 20 years, if I've learned anything at all, it is simply this. You can trust God to keep His promises. Did you hear that, church? You can trust God to keep His promises. Not just a promise, but all the promises of God are yes and amen to those of us that are in Christ. In fact, 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, For no matter how many promises God has made. How many promises has God made? Does anybody know how, how many? Over 7,000. Let's give it up for everybody that was in the first service. <coughs> Over 7,000 promises are in the Word of God for you, for your marriage, for your family, for your health, for your business, for your ministry, for your calling, for your future, for your destiny. No matter how many promises God has made, they are... Yes. Yes. They are... Yes. 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 I know about you. If I'm having a down day and God says, Shane, I want to give you life, I'm like, yes. If, if things are upside down, yes. If, uh, if things are going south, yes. It doesn't matter. Like when, when the enemy is coming in like a flood, I'm reaching and I'm grabbing hold of the Bible and I'm saying, yes, 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 yes. No matter how many promises God has made, they are yes, yes in Christ. And so through Him, the Amen. the the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. And everybody said, amen. amen. So as we come around God's word today, I only really have one word for you. And it's like, one word? You've already said like 867. I know, but I'm gonna get to the one word. I really only have one word for you, one simple word. I wanna speak it into you. I wanna speak it over you. I believe God wants to prophesy it over you, declare it over you, speak it into you. Get it so You might get it into your spirit, into your heart, into your gizzards today. I've got one word and that one word is possess. Possess. Friends, God has got land for you to possess. God has got things for you to possess. There are still, there is still so much before you. There is more before you than there is behind you. The Word of God is yet to be fulfilled in your life. And if it's yet to be fulfilled, you need to lay hold of it. You need to go after it and you need to possess it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. We've got to go after it. The Word is possessed. Friends, some of you have been wandering around in the wilderness for far too long and it's time to rise up and possess the promises of God. In fact, why don't we let our faith off the leash today? Why don't we get a bit crazy in the house of God, unleash our faith and let it go wild and believe for every promise of God to be fulfilled in our life with a yes and an amen. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 11, reading from verse 22 says, if, Everyone say, if. if. The, the reason there's an if there, there's an if there because, because all the promises of God are, are really conditional. Meaning that there are so many promises, over 7,000 promises in the Word of God for us, but there's always an if. There, there's usually an if. There, there's very, very few that, that not, don't require uh, the if to be fulfilled for it to become our reality. If you carefully observe all these commands, I am giving you to follow 
to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways and to hold fast to them. Then the Lord will drive out all these nations before you and you will dispossess nations larger and stronger than you. Every place. Everyone say every place. Every place. All right. How many of you know every place means every place? Every place. Listen to this. Every place where you set your foot will be yours. Did you hear that? Every place where you set your foot will be yours. Your territory. Everyone say territory. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon. Are there any Lebanese in the house today? Praise God. God bless you all. I love the kebabs. You know what I'm saying? I love kebabs. All right. All right. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the Euphrates River to the Western Sea. No man, no, 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 no man, no devil, no sickness, no adversary, no one will be able to stand against you. The Lord your God, as He promised you, will put the terror and fear of you on the whole land, wherever you go. See, I'm setting before you today a blessing and a curse. All right. The blessing if you obey the commands of the Lord your God that I'm giving you today. The curse if you disobey the commands of the Lord your God and turn from the way that I command you today by following other gods which you have not known. Choose this day, church. Choose this day. Choose blessings. Choose curses. Choose life. Choose death. Choose to enter in and possess all the territory God has promised you as a child of God, or you can continue to live on as a traveler, an alien, a sojourner, a refugee who never knows the joy and peace of possessing what God has promised you. Today, you get to choose. You say, really? Yeah, you choose. The promises of God are yes and amen to those of us that are in Christ Jesus. But we need to determine now, how much do we want to see the promises of God outworked in our life? Now we get to choose. I love that the fact that after God makes a promise, largely as to whether we enter in and possess it or not, largely that is up to us. This decision now is ours. This choice is ours as to whether we're going to, position, uh, we're going to possess it or not. Now, before you begin to tell me all the reasons why you cannot possess it, can I encourage you uh, with a thus saith the Lord or a prophetic utterance that might go something like this, zippeth the lip. <laughs> what do you say? You heard it. Zippeth the lip. How many of you know that that sometimes is the Word of God? Sometimes you just got to be quiet. You got to zip the lip. Because I know this, I promise you, as I'm talking about the promises of God, some of you are already beginning to formulate in your mind and thinking all the reasons why you cannot possess what's yours in Jesus' name. Some of you are beginning to have a conversation with yourself. Yeah, it's good for him and it's good for her and it's good for them, but they don't know my situation. They don't know my circumstances. They don't know what I'm up against. Friends, can I tell you this? It doesn't actually matter what you're up against. The Word of God is greater. The Word of God is stronger. The Word of God is eternal. The Word of God is where it's at. Remember Joshua, when he was going to go see the walls of Jericho come down, he says to all of Israel, hey, I got, this, I got this word from God and this is what we need to do. We're going to go and take this city. This is what we're going to do. It sounds a little bit crazy. It sounds a bit local. I bet you know what I'm saying. But we're going to step it out anyway. This is what we're going to do. Every day for a week, we're going to walk around the, 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 the city. We're just going to walk around the city. We're going to blow our trumpets and horns and... We're just going to get out there and make worship to God. We're just going to do it one day, two day, three day, four day, five day, six day. And on the seventh day, we're going to go around seven times. And then we're going to shout and the walls are going to come down. I can imagine everyone is thinking, he's lost his mind. They're thinking, what's this guy on? What's he doing? You laugh too loud, sister. It's like you know what I meant by that. Ah. Ah. Oh, glass offer, what's happening? All right, so, so everyone's thinking, what's going on? What's going on? What is it? He, what, he wants us to what? That's what he says though. He says, march around, but this is what? On the seventh day, do not, do not be talking. Don't even speak a single word. 
Why was he saying that? Because he knew if those guys started talking together, they are going to talk themselves out of a miracle. They are going to talk themselves out of the blessing. They are going to talk themselves out of what God has promised. But how many of you know God is always faithful to His Word, even if it doesn't make sense. If we put it to practice, if we go to work with it, God will come through because we've never seen Him fail His promises. And everybody said, Amen. Galatians 3.29 says, if you belong to Christ. Does anybody in the house belong to Christ? Uh, Some of you are still making up your mind. (laughs) If you belong to Christ, then you are Abram's seed and heirs according to the promise. How how many of you know that you're an heir? Now, now, when you say... We, we know we're heirs because the will has already been written. In fact, there's two wills and there's two testaments. There's the Old Testament and there's the New Testament. If we are in Christ Jesus, then we're Abram's seed, which is Old Testament, but we're living in the New Testament, but it doesn't actually matter. It's all the will of God for our life. We are heirs. Now, here's the thing. I was preparing this morning. I go to the same cafe every Sunday. I sit there. I prepare. Some of the girls and guys in there know what I do, what, what we do. Some have got no idea because they rotate them through. But this last few weeks is this girl, she comes up and probably for three or four or five weeks going back over the time that I've been there, uh, she turns up and, and every week I have the same thing. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit like same, same when it comes to breakfast, if you know what I mean. As in, you've got to have toast, amen? <laughs> got to have toast? I have, I have poached eggs, runny like grandma used to make. I always say runny because sometimes they come hard. That's a boiled egg. I know my eggs, you know what I'm saying? So I always say, I just make sure they know because otherwise it's going back to the kitchen. All right, so I need, I need poached eggs runny like grandma used to make. And then I have salmon, you know, the pink salmon. Uh, and then I have avocado. Sometimes though, I do get, I do get crazy and mix it up because sometimes I'll, I'll have my toast and, and eggs and salmon by themselves. And sometimes I'll have toast and eggs and avocado by themselves. But then I'll put it all together in other times. So... This girl comes up to me today and she's watching my, this is what they do though. Every, they all do the same thing. They come up, they, they know what I'm going to have. It's one of four things essentially. Toast, never, and eggs, they're always there. But the other two, so, so they come up and this is what she says. She, 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 every, every week they do the same thing. What do you want for breakfast? They know. So they've got their little pad there and they write, but they're reading my notes. They do, every week, same thing. So I, these days I just sort of turn it around a little bit so they can get a better glimpse. And just, just take them slowly. Just take my order slowly. <laughs> it's all good. So today she says to me, she goes, she goes, what do you do? Are you a teacher? I said, I am. I'm a teacher. And she goes, what do you teach? I said, well, actually, I'm a teacher, preacher, and I teach the Word of God. She goes, really? She goes, and, and so this here, you, you wrote that? I said, I wrote that. <laughs> I did. I wrote it. I wrote it. And she goes, oh. She goes, what have you written? I said, well, I'm going to tell the church today how that, that." I said, I'll put it to you this way. I said, do you have a dad? She goes, yes. I said, well, if your dad, if he he wrote a will and you knew that you were in that will and then he died, would you want to know what was in the will? And she said, of course. I said, good point. This is how it works. As Christians, we are God's children. He wrote a will and Jesus, sent, uh, Jesus came and died. So now the, the will has been enacted. Therefore, we are recipients. We are heirs of what God has promised us. And as children of God, we now have right to enter into the fullness of the life that God's got for us. She goes, awesome. Latte. All right, so off she went. Off she went. But we put it out there. How many of you know that you are heirs? You are heirs of the living God and what has been written for you. All right, so therefore, as God promised Moses and God promised Joshua, every place where you set your foot will be yours. Where are you stepping into? Where are you stepping into? Every place where you set your foot. You should know when you go in there, you're not a peasant, you're not a beggar. You're not a second class citizen. When you go into wherever you go into, you are a child of God. And all the promises of God are yes and amen to you. 
So every place where you set your foot will be yours. Now, while I understand that, that you may not get too excited about the territory that God promised Moses, uh, in particular in regard to this passage, can I say to you, you should. You may not, you may not yet understand completely what it means, but I want to encourage you today, get excited about this scripture. Have an understanding. Every place where I put my foot, it is mine in Jesus' name. It's going to be blessed. It's going to, be pros- it's going to prosper. The enemies are going to flee before me. They're going to go. Now, Deuteronomy 11, verse 24, every place where, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Every place where you set your foot will be yours. Your territory. Everyone say territory. territory. How many of you know God's got a territory for you? Now, you may not get excited about the territory promised in the Word here, but God has still got a territory for you. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the Euphrates River to the Western Sea. So here we find ourselves as New Testament believers. We believe in the Old Testament as well. Put them all together and we've got the Bible. All right. So while we know we may no longer have or be bound by the borders uh, from the desert to Lebanon, the Euphrates River to the Western Sea, because Jesus has told us to go into all the world. Is that what he said? Go into all the world. Preach the gospel, baptize, make disciples. So once upon a time, here's the borders. All right, I've promised you this land. This land is yours. Jesus comes along and says, all bets are off. We're going to extend the borders. We're going to extend the boundaries. What was yours in a geographical area, we're going to now lift up into a kingdom dimension, into a kingdom space. And you're going to go into all the world and you're going to share the gospel, preach the gospel everywhere you go. But here's the thing, friends, I want to say to you today, as much as Jesus may have lifted the boundaries, as it were, and sent us into all the world, there are still territories that you need to possess. There are still arenas that you need to go after. There are still things in life that God says they are yours. Put your foot in now and take them. Take them. Don't let another day go by without taking what is yours. You've got to possess it. Now, you might be like, good. So what is the territory and where are the boundaries? Well, I'm so glad you asked because now I can speak into that. Galatians 3.29. If you belong to Christ and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Then you are Abram's seed and heirs according to the promise. Second Corinthians 1.20, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. What does that mean? That means that now this book called the Bible, this book, the scriptures, this book, the word of God is now our domain. This is now our territory from one cover to the other cover, from the top to the bottom. It's all yours, all yours. Every place where you step your foot is yours. And you might be like, Shane, what are you saying? There's over 7,000 promises in the Word of God that you need to possess. You need to go after. You need to dispossess those that are in there and push them out, knowing that this is my my domain. This is my territory. This is my promise. This is my life. This is what God's got for me. This is what God's got for my family, for my business, for my health, for whatever it is that is dear and near and important to you. Friends, as we open the Word of God, can I encourage you, this is why we need to get into the Word of God and know the Word of God, because if you don't know the Word of God, then you don't know what's yours. Like I said to the girl at the restaurant, if, if your father wrote a will, wouldn't you want to know what it says? If your father wrote a will, wouldn't you want to know what was in it? Wouldn't you want to know what is yours? Friends, we need to know the Word because if we don't, we won't step out and we won't step into the promises of God that are ours through Christ. How will we dispossess the squatters that have taken possession of our territory and drive them out if we don't know the parameters, the borders, and the fullness of what is ours in Christ. Now, some of you, let's just get down to the nitty gritty. Some of you have made peace with your enemies because you haven't realized they're squatters and they're squatting in your territory. Territory that's been purchased for you by the blood of Jesus at Calvary. So if it's a promise within your territory, within the parameters, borders, and within the edges of this wonderful, wonderful book called the Bible, it's a promise that you need to step out 
and step into that you might possess what is yours for you and yours for yours. I know as a father, I'm not just possessing for me, I'm possessing for us. I'm possessing for our family. I'm possessing for our church as a pastor. I'm possessing. We need to know what is in the Scriptures that we might step out and begin to possess. Now, that means this. That means when the enemy comes, when the squatters come, we need to call them out. Call them out. Now, I've been to footy with people, and and, and at the footy, people don't mind getting vocal. People don't mind getting passionate. People don't mind getting on their feet and looking a little bit crazy, if you know what I'm talking about. But sometimes in the house of God, we're just happy to go along with stuff. To heck with stuff. We need to make a decision. We're not going to be pushed around any longer by the squatters, by the enemies, by whatever it is that wants to come in and just squat in our life. So when fear comes against you, squatter, you need to make a choice. Squatter, you need to call it out. Don't put up with it. Don't just say, well, This is how it has to be. Who says it has to be this way? The promises of God tell us very clearly that fear is not your friend. Fear shouldn't be welcome at your table, shouldn't be welcome in your life. Friends, when fear comes against you, you've got to make your choice. You've got to dispossess it. You've got to let faith arise. Call it out. I'm not going to live there any longer. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to begin to speak the Word of God over my life. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear. What does that mean? When Jesus came into your life and set you free, he set you free from fear. Why are we submitting again to fear? Fear is not our friend. Fear is our foe. Fear is not welcome in our house. Fear is not welcome in our life. Fear is not welcome in our marriage. Fear is not welcome in our family. We will not be subject to fear. But you receive the spirit of sonship and by him we cry out, Abba, Father. What about when trouble comes in and tries to divide your marriage? Squatter! Can I encourage you? Call it out. It gets very quiet when I go to this one. Call it out. Squatter! Instead of boxing on with each other, why don't you hold hands and pray against this spirit of trouble? Now you might be like, oh man, yeah, it's interesting that people never want to talk about trouble in marriage. If you've never experienced trouble in marriage, you probably haven't got married. You know what I'm saying? It comes to all of our addresses. What God wants to bring together, the devil wants to divide. So if you're married and it's a godly marriage, understand the enemy is going to come against you. Trouble is going to come and knock on your door. But you don't need to let trouble in. You can actually make a decision. Why not pray together? Why not get help together? Why not make a decision? This house is a house of God. This family is a family of God. Trouble, you're not welcome here any longer. You've been squatting for too long. Now, squat off. Squat off. Squat. All right. You know, squat. Squat off. Romans chapter, no, we'll go somewhere else, shall we? Proverbs 18, verse 22. Listen to this. Here's the scripture. He who finds a wife, praise God. Anyone found a wife lately? He who finds a wife. There's lots of candidates over there by the look of it. Getting rather excited at the moment. Praise God. Some of you are like 14 years old. You should relax. Relax. That's all right. Have a dream, brother. Have a dream. As in good things come to those who wait. I don't know if that's scriptural, but we'll go with it. All right. So listen to this. Listen to this. All right. He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favour from the Lord. Now, you know me when it comes to scripture. I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. Can I mix this up a little bit? I actually think the same is true the other way around. He who, oh, shoot. That's, that's probably 2018 in its fullness. Uh, so, um, so she who finds a husband finds what is good and receives favour from the Lord. How many of you agree it would be the same? Otherwise, it would be like God would like love his sons but hate his daughters. You know what I'm saying? It would be like, Ash, you found a wife. You found a good thing. Norma, you found Ash. Bad luck. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that doesn't make sense to me. It's like, it shouldn't be like that. It should be like, good, 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 good. All right. 
So, but I, I mean, I'm always intrigued when I read this passage, finds a wife, you know, finds a husband. It was like, I went down to Bunnings on Saturday and I went into the garden section and I found a husband, you know what I'm saying? I found a husband, his name is Adam, because Adam was in the garden section, you know what I'm saying? So it's like some of the guys would be like, yeah, I went, down to, I went down to Bunnings and I went into the white goods section and found a wife. Because <coughs> brides come in white. What are you awing at me? Brides come in white, you had white, what are you talking about? See, why do people think the worst of me all the time? Sometimes the vibes in here are negative. <laughs> He who finds a wife finds a good thing. Amen. Amen. Trouble, get out of our life. Get out of our marriage. And everyone said, amen. Uh, when, when sickness is trying to get a hold of you, uh, how many of you know sickness is a squatter? Squatter! Now, I'm not saying that you'll never get sick. I pray that I never get sick. But as you can tell, I'm struggling at the moment. I don't care. I'm still going to keep speaking the word of God over my life. I'm healed in Jesus' name. And then I'm healed in Jesus' name. This voice is meant to preach the word. It's meant to praise God. It's going to come back and we're going to be happy and my nose is going to stop running. Good. Praise God. So it's already working. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So it's already working. How many of you know sickness does not come from God? Yeah. All right. Just so you know our theology at Enjoy Church, if you, ever, if you ever pray for me and you pray for me like this, some, have you ever had someone pray for you and I go like this, Lord, if it be your will, Please heal Betty. How many of you know it's a stupid prayer? Stupid. You say, what do you mean stupid? If it be your will, Jesus went to the cross. By his stripes, we are healed. It's his will. We're praying in his will. Now, as to whether he does or doesn't, I'm going to leave that to him. But I'm going to believe every time. It's the will of God to heal the sick. It's the will of God. He is our healer. The Lord our God is our healer. I'm going to speak healing, declare healing, prophesy healing in Jesus' name. So if you ever come to me and say, you know, you think Betty is sick. Oh, Pastor Shane, the reason Betty is sick, we prayed for her. But the reason she's sick is because she's got sin in her life. I'm going to slap you. Actually, I'll get Georgie to do it because she's a way better slapper. So push like that. How many of you know there's no sense in that at all? Some people are like, ah. they've got to get a revelation of God. God is good. God is love. God is merciful. God is kind. God is our healer. And when we come to him, he's going to heal. So when sickness comes, no, it's a squatter. I'm praying for healing and nothing less. Nothing less. I will never stop praying for healing. I don't care what the doctors tell me, and I've been told everything by the doctors. I will always pray for healing because life comes in Jesus' name. And then we could go, we could go one more, one more. All right, what about, what about poverty? How many of you know poverty is a squatter? Yeah. Poverty is a squatter. Malachi chapter 3, verse 11 uh, says, And I will rebuke the devourer. Now, there's an if before this. You know verse 10. It's like the tithe verse. It's in, uh, if you bring your whole tithe in the storehouse, I'll open the heavens, pour out uh, floodgates of heaven, pour out so much blessing, you will not be able to contain it. And then it goes on, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, uh, says the Lord of hosts, and all nations will call you blessed. I really like that. For you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts as the worship comes, our team comes. For you will be a delightful land. I was a little shocked when I read that this morning uh, because I didn't realise it says you. Most translations actually say, for yours will be a delightful land. But in the New King James Version here, it actually says, for you will be a delightful land. I like that. You will be a delightful land. So now this is my territory. And everywhere I go, People can see that I am in Christ, a delightful land. I'm bearing fruit in season and out of season. That they can see we don't have trouble in our life. And I, I thank God. I thank God for my wife. I've got to tell you, when I found Georgia Girl, I found the best. Some of you are like, you married up. I married way up. Way up. As in, I can't believe I married this girl. I can't believe I married you. I just want to sing you a love song. 
but I won't. But this is your land. This is your land. Your life, everywhere you step, everywhere you put your foot. We're not talking about a geographical area. But now I'm stepping into marriage and yours will be a delightful land. Now I'm stepping into family and yours will be a delightful land. And now I'm stepping into business and yours will be a delightful land. Now I'm stepping into ministry and yours will be a delightful land. What is it that you're stepping into? Because the Lord wants that to be a delightful land. He wants you to be a delightful land. He wants you to know who is allowed in your life and who is not. Trouble, we rebuke you in Jesus' name. Sickness, we rebuke you in Jesus' name. Now, understand understand this. There, there will still be enemies that you will need to drive out. Last week, I was standing at a, uh, in Kiwana Waters, C3 Kiwana Waters. Went up there, preached at a men's conference, did three services on Sunday. Great church, great people. Loved it, absolutely loved it. It was a wonderful time. As I was standing there in worship, you know, there's not too many Sundays where I get to stand in worship and not be looking at what's working, what's not working, and da 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 As in, because at the end of the day, it stops here, but and you're past it, you just want it to go well, and you want people to be cared for, looked after, so your eyes are everywhere. But last week I was in worship, and I'm in someone's house's house, so I didn't care. Like, let, let it to them. I just want to worship God. And I really felt God say to me, for the last, if I can just be honest, just being really honest with you, probably the last three or four or so months, I've been feeling like I've been operating under a wet blanket. I just haven't felt myself. Cross between energy levels, cross between a little bit sick, cross between lethargic, cross between, uh, you know what I mean? Where's my joy? If you know me, I'm a, I'm a fun monkey. Where's my joy? Where, where's the fun? Where's the life? Where's the energy? I just haven't been feeling myself. I really felt the Lord say to me, Shane, there's been a spirit of oppression trying to land on you and you've got to shake it off. You've got to shake it off. In a moment, I realised it's true. I felt oppressed. I felt like the enemy's just trying to just close me down, close me down, close me down. And in that moment, I realised I, I, I need to break through this. I need this thing off me. So I began to worship God louder. I began to praise God louder. I began to speak into the atmosphere and declare that thing broken over my life. I'm not going to submit to that thing any longer. I'm not going to bow down to that thing any longer. I'm not going to give into it. I'm not going to make room for it. I'm not going to make peace with it because it doesn't belong in the boundaries of my territory. This is my life that God has given to me. All the promises in it are yes and amen. This is my territory and I'm not going to allow no filthy, foul squatter that shouldn't be there to come in and sit there. I'm not going to allow trouble into my life. I'm not going to allow poverty into my life. I'm not going to allow... Now, I understand we all go through stuff, but here's the thing. Dispossess those that are coming in to sit there. Make a decision. I'm not going to live with it. I'm going to drive it out. In Jesus' name, I am in Christ. The promises of God are yes and amen. Why don't we stand to our feet? This is what we're going to do. I want to pray for you really quickly. We're not going to take a long time. But we are going to take just a couple minutes. Going to take a couple minutes. If you've got the time, stay. If you have to run, run now, but don't mess up what God's about to do. Maybe you need to be here because maybe God is trying to break something off your life, cause you to have enough faith to begin to speak it out, drive it out of your life. Dispossess it. Understand you don't need to live with it. Friends, if you're here today and you're struggling, there's trouble, there's trouble. It's like I can't seem to get away from trouble in my marriage, in my family. It just seems to be all over me. There's trouble, trouble, trouble. Everywhere I go, I find myself in this. It was like a spirit of trouble and it's just all over me in my workplace, in my, in my social life, in my friends. It's just trouble. Maybe it's a spirit of fear. Fear. I hate fear. The devil hates fear. The Bible says God did not give you a spirit of fear. If God did not give you a spirit of fear and you struggle with fear, who gave it to you? Who gave it to you? If it didn't come from God, where did it come from? Who sent it? It's the enemy. Friends, you're not meant to live under and bow down and submit to a spirit of fear. You gotta tell that fear to get out of your life. You gotta drive it out of the parameter, the territory of your life. Enough, enough, enough. Drive it out in Jesus' name. Maybe some of you are struggling today with sickness. Can I encourage you? Drive sickness out of your life. Get sickness out of your life. Begin to declare that you are healthy in Jesus' name. Begin to declare the Word of God over your life. Did I read that Scripture? I don't know if I did or not when it comes to sickness. Do it. 
Thank you very much. I received the encouragement. As I said, it's Proverbs 3, verse 7 and 8. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. That's the if part. Uh, this will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Push it out. You don't need to live with sickness. Make a decision. I'm not going to live with it. Don't need to live with poverty. Don't need to live with an oppression or depression or any other enemy that would come out against you. Can I encourage you today? Make a decision right here, right now. We're not putting up with this any longer. If you're here today, as I've been speaking, I have no doubt there'll be men and women all over this room and you know that you've been living with squatters. It could have been any of those or any other thing that is trying to break down the promises of God being outworked in your life. If you need to be set free from that today, you want to be set free from that today, can I encourage you right here, right now, as we begin to worship in just a moment, just hop out of your seat and come. In fact, just come, just come. I'm just going to pray for you. We're just going to go straight at it. If you're here and it's like, I've been living with these squatters for too long in my life, just hop out of your seat and come. Just come, come, come on, come on, church. Encourage them as they come. Let's give them some applause. Give them some encouragement. Just come, brothers and sisters. You don't need to live with this rubbish for another day. You don't need to live with this nonsense for another day. Come on, let's give it up for them. Let's keep clubbing as they come. We're going to pray for them. We're believing for salvation to come, deliverance to come. Oh, Jesus, we bless you. We praise you. Keep clapping because they're still coming. Just keep clapping for them. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Now, I know that you know God loves you. You know that. But I want to encourage you now. You don't need to live with this other stuff. You don't need to live with it. It's not yours to own. They're squatters. You don't need to care for it. Squatters, not your family, not your friend. Squatters. You need to make a decision. You need to make a choice. I'm not going to live with anything that's not from God. The blessings are from God. The favour is from God. The love is from God. The joy is from God. The peace is from God. All these other things that want to come in make resonance in my life, in my marriage, in my family, in my business, in my home, in my ministry, etc. If they're not from, not from God, they're not from God. You don't need to receive them. You don't need to welcome them. But you need to say now, enough. 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 We're not going to do this any longer. We've struggled for long enough. We've put up with it for long enough. It's not a good place to be where you think you've got a house and someone comes in and lives with it, with you in it every day. It's like, who is this? What is this? This is not from God. This is not your friend. You've got to decide today, enough, 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 enough. We're going to pray. Why don't we just, just position ourselves before God to receive freedom every place where you set your foot. Step into your marriage, step into your workplace, step into your family, step into your home, step into your future, step into your calling, step into your destiny, step in wherever you're stepping into. Understand that that ground is ordained by God. Over 7,000 promises in His Word that speak of freedom that speak of life, that speak of blessing, that speak of His goodness, that speak of His love, that speak of His joy, that speak of fulfillment, that speak of you. He loves you and has given all for you. He loves you and has given everything for you. There's nothing He didn't hold back. There's nothing He kept for Himself. But He gave His Son who died on a cross and paid the ultimate price that you might be free, free to live within the pages of this book, to live as a living testimony of the goodness of God, of the outworking of the promises of God and that He is faithful to each and every one of them. So now, Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray, Lord, for my brothers and I pray for my sisters. Lord, I declare in Jesus' name, that every squatter is receiving notice right now. Every squatter is under the eviction notice right now. 
No longer will my brothers and sisters be forced to live, Lord God, in places of captivity, places of bondage, places, Lord God, where they feel like they're not themselves. But Lord, we declare in Jesus' Name that sickness shall be broken, that fear shall be broken. Come on, church, just begin to lift up your voice. Fear shall be broken. Lord, we declare in Jesus' Name, poverty shall be broken. We declare, Lord God, Your will and Your purpose shall be outworked in their life. We declare fear shall be gone. We declare depression shall be gone. Oppression shall be gone. We declare, Lord God, the healing power of God, the miraculous of God. We bind up the spirit of trouble that would trouble my brothers and sisters, trouble their marriages, trouble their businesses and their families. We bind that spirit. We break that spirit. And we release, Lord God, the spirit of love again, the spirit of faith again, that they might begin to believe, Lord God, for every promise that is in Your Word. Every promise, every promise, every promise, every promise is Yours in Jesus' Name.